morning, Crossroads Life Church. It's so great to have you join us for our online service this morning. Wanted to say happy Canada Day. It's so great to be a Canadian, and uh, we have a great service plan for you this morning. Wanted to let you know a few little things about our uh chat room so there's a heart button if you like something that pastor john says feel free to press that heart button let us know that you were a part of the service get on there chat with people in our community it's great to hear from you if you're new or you've been a part of crossroads for a long time we have a get connected button and so we want to know that you attended our service this morning as well if you have any needs in your life right now we have a prayer button and uh, we have prayer partners that are that are standing by right now to pray with you for anything that you have need of. And so we just pray that you would enjoy the rest of this service. We know God has something in it for you. Be blessed. Welcome to CLC Online. We're so happy that you could join us. So let's stand and let's worship together. Let's sing, Don't Lose Heart. Oh, don't lose heart, oh my soul, oh my soul Don't give up, there is hope, there is always hope There is peace And there is peace in the storm, in the storm No, don't forget, He is Lord, He is Lord of all King of glory, there is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty, freedom is in his name, open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise, there is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory, lift your eyes, stand in awe, stand in awe. There is one, only one, where my help comes from There is a King of glory, there is a God who saves One who is strong and mighty, freedom is in His name Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory And nations bow, mountains shake At the sound of just one name Over all Jesus reigns And nations bow, mountains shake At the sound of just one name Over all, Jesus reigns King of glory, there is a God who saves One who is strong and mighty, freedom is in His name Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory There is a lion roaring Jesus, the King of glory There is a lion roaring Jesus, the King of glory
sing, He's coming. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare His praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Oh, every knee will bow before Him
pulling soft I will lay your soul to you I will lay your soul to you I will lay your soul to you You are my God Come on, just worship Him I will lay your soul
Friends. 
Jesus that you are fighting for us we thank you father that you go before us that you are with us God through the storm through the battle whatever life comes whatever life throws our way father you never leave us Jesus your peace your mercy your goodness follow us all the days of our life and this morning we hold on to your truth we hold on to your promises God that all your promises are yes and amen church this morning in faith we want to ask that you would join us in prayer um, we've got a couple people we're con continuing to pray for and believe for and stand in the gap for we're praying for christine scouten um, continuing to pray for healing for cancer and we want to lift up um, the clark family pam and Peyton, um, who had just recently lost their baby so right now why don't you just take a moment and let's just lift these people up to the lord Christine, we thank you for the Clark family, God, that you have brought them to yourself, Jesus. I pray, God, through um, their testimony, God, through the journey that you are bringing them through, Lord, that you um, would allow to, them to see, God, that you are faithful through it all, God, that you are good through it all. We pray for healing from head to toe in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are the healer, God, that you are fighting our battles, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We pray for healing, God. We pray um, for comfort and for peace for the Clark family, God, that you would be with them in times that are uncertain. God, in times with questions and doubts, Lord, I pray that your love and your grace and your mercy, Lord Jesus, would speak louder than, than the pain would speak louder, God, in their situations, Father. Would you be with them right now, Holy Spirit? God, we thank you and we have a praise report, amen. We are praising God that Rick Lashbrook has had significant improvements in his health um, since receiving Jesus, but let's continue to pray for complete healing, amen. God, you are good and you are faithful, Jesus. And we wanna lift your name high, God. We wanna praise you through the storm, God. We know that you will see us through. We know, God, that through your name we are victors, God. We see the victory in Jesus' name. And we thank you and we praise you. And we give you all the glory, all the honor and all the thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you, church, for worshiping with us this morning. Hi, we are so excited that you are joining us for CLC Online. We'd love for you to let us know you're here. Click the Get Connected button at the top right of your screen or follow the link in the description if you're not joining us live. There's also buttons or links to connect you to our giving page, kids ministry videos, and life groups. You can also access all this and more by downloading our app to your device. Just search Crossroads Life Church wherever you download apps and you'll find it there. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. We wanna to continue to trust God in this way. We have three different ways that you can give. You can give through Tithely, which is found on our app. You can give through Interact e-transfers or through checks sent through the mail marked with your name and the designation. For e-transfers, 
make sure you check out the details on our website, Giving Page, so that it gets added to your year-end tax donation receipt. We are so glad you're here, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the service at CLC Online. Good day, church. So good to be with you in your homes. I hope that some of you are gathering together and having some watch parties this week to kind of hang out with one another. You know, one thing I thought about is maybe, um, you know, just having people at your home say at one o'clock and watching it after the 11 o'clock time on YouTube and, uh, and then having lunch together at one o'clock if 11 o'clock would be too early. But whatever, I just, I just hope that uh, you're beginning to maybe get around the, uh, the camera with, uh, or the video screen, or however you're watching it, um, uh, with some other people, so you can kind of get back into fellowship and connection, which we've all been kind of hankering for, missing, missing so much. A couple of just uh, things I want to mention before I get into the message today. Um, we have a prayer summit tonight at 6 p.m. I want to encourage you to tune in. Uh, you will get it. You can get a Zoom connection. Uh, or No, it's a Facebook thing. Yeah, you just have to be part of our, our Prayer Summit uh, Facebook group, and you can watch it on there. And, um, and then also, if you've had any testimonies of, you know, anything that God has been doing through your life in this time, uh, either through words of knowledge or just, you know, whatever it might be, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'd love to have some fresh testimonies, and uh, you can post them on the prayer wall as well. That would be a great thing. So, uh, without any further ado, I want to start a new message uh, series this week. And I'm calling it Keeping It Real with Jesus. Keeping it real with Jesus. How many know that is just a good thing to do, is keep it real with Jesus? Most of us have read through the Gospels, you know, the four, first four uh, books of the New Testament portion of the Bible. And I... I was reading through it recently. I, I could not help but be struck by the direct hit that Jesus makes on a number of weighty and controversial issues. Certainly, they'd be, they'd be considered controversial today, some of them. Jesus doesn't tiptoe around these issues. Uh, he just, he doesn't gently kind of wade in. He just makes a direct hit. Boom. And then when you consider that these things were written 2,000 years ago, you realize that although the look, the feel, and the technological way with which we interact with our outer world has changed immensely, people and the issues that we have really have not changed. The issues we grapple with are the same which Jesus, uh, the, the same that the people of his day did, and the same ones that make his words as meaningful and as needy today as when Jesus' sandaled feet walked the dusty roads of Galilee. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was reading through Matthew in my annual Read Through the Bible. And it just struck me forcibly, uh, afresh, you know, how Jesus just, just addressed these things. And... Uh, as it did, I, I, I posted on my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter account, I, I posted the following, which I'm going to show you on the screen. And I said, most people today would not like having Jesus as their pastor. Why? Well, no hype, no humor, a lot of straight up challenge, continually, continual exhortations to reach deeper, come up higher, deny self, take up the cross, always speaking to and reproving heart issues, instead of ignoring difficult issues. In Jesus' first major sermon, he made a direct hit on hatred, anger, adultery, divorce, reconciliation, forgiveness, going the extra mile, loving your enemy, secret prayer, fasting, giving, not hoarding wealth, and judging others. He was just getting started. In addition to all that, he spent hours healing the sick, ministering in the supernatural. No, he would not be popular with church people today. Now, you may, uh, you may say, well, hey, I would, that, that, that would be popular with me. But, you know, it's popular maybe listening, but 
But when that is always kind of directed at your heart, Jesus was always, you know, aiming at the heart, dealing with heart issues. So in this series, I've decided it's kind of time to take a deep dive into some of the things that Jesus taught on. And you'll notice that none of them are designed to get you salivating. You know, in the popular celebrity church world today, so much is said that is just designed to whip us up. So much is said that's just designed to be popular. So much is said that's just kind of, you know, uh, it's designed to be cool, edgy, you know. And uh, what Jesus said are hard-hitting truths that deal with our own selfishness, our self-will, our negligence, our careless treatment of others, our unwillingness to forgive, to confront and reconcile properly. When we get into these, we actually realize how ungodly we are. Because in my observation, even, even most of us as believers do not follow Jesus' teaching on a number of issues. And uh, one of the things that you realize is that in order to follow Jesus' teaching, you not only need faith, but you need courageous faith. And we need a courageous faith to follow Jesus because as merciful as he is in taking our place in death, in giving us his life to die in our place and pay the penalty for our sin, he is merciless in addressing sin and calling us out on it and directing us towards dealing with it through repentance. Jesus doesn't ask anyone permission. permission. He's, not, uh, he's not doing a Q&A. He just dives deep and goes for it. And so as an introduction to this series, I want to start with a passage that's taken out of the sixth chapter of Luke, Luke's gospel, starting at verse 39. And let's look at it together. And he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? A disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone who's perfectly trained will be like his teacher. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove the speck that is in your eye. And when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye then you'll be able to see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today. And Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you would open this passage to our hearts. But Lord, also that we lay bare our hearts before you. And we ask, Lord, that as we, we read the scripture and hear this word, that God, if there's anything in us that needs to be changed, it needs transformation. In this specific area, Father, we ask you to just release grace to us to forsake it today and move on and, and be healed and be changed. And so, Father, we thank you for grace for that. We're believing you, Father, not just to, to hear a good message or something that's going to whip us up, but help us to hear your word. And Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And all God's people said. You know, Jesus observes and knows human behavior. He's like the psychoanalyst that knows you better than you know yourself. He's like the prophet who, who's never met you before, but he's reading your mail. Jesus created us, he knows us, and he is speaking to what he sees in us. And by the way, the Gospels are not an advice column. The Gospels and the words of Christ are the word, the word of God to you and me. And if we diminish it by defining it in any other way, we're going to lose the full impact of its message. So I have uh, four points that I want to bring out of this passage. And uh, so number one, all of us have impaired vision. It's evident, first of all, that Jesus was directing the, this particular teaching at those who had spiritual leadership. Yeah, he was, he was speaking to the teachers of the law. He was speaking to the Pharisees. He was speaking to the rabbis. As he referenced leading, he talked about leading the blind. So he was talking about to leaders and kind of speaking into that. But he, 
he also gives it away by immediately connecting it to discipleship. And in reading it, you almost wonder, well, what's Jesus saying? He's talking about the blind leading the blind. And then he kind of says this word about, uh, you know, a disciple shall be like his teacher. What's he, you know, it sounds like he's kind of going in two different directions. No, he's trying to say to the leaders that, you know, if you're a blind leader, those who follow you are going to become like you. And so he's, you know, he's speaking to leadership. But it doesn't leave the rest of us off the hook. It applies to all, seeing that we all share the human condition of spiritual blindness. We all have blind spots. Areas about you that you do not see that others see better. <laughs> it's humiliating at times and it's distressing at times that we, we actually know that we are walking around and others see the way we come across they see areas of us that we are not really always in touch with. So Jesus assumed that we all had them. We all have blind spots. So let's start by answering the rhetorical question that Jesus asked. Can the blind lead the blind? Well, not well. They're going to wind up in a ditch. But by any standard, that is what we become when we observe the speck in another person's eye but ignore what is in our eye. You know, it's a speck versus plank. Think about that. Speck versus plank. Jesus is referring to a proportional difference. A speck is not much of a problem, and it can be easily solved. But a plank is a much greater issue. The plank is the hypocrisy of seeing everyone else's issues and problems, but not perceiving your own. Or having perceived them, not dealing with them first. When observing the weaknesses and issues of others, I wonder how often we ever ask ourselves, what am I not seeing about myself? What am I, you know, it's easy for me to see a fault in you. It's easy for me to observe that you didn't do this well, or you're not, you're not paying attention to this, or you have a character flaw, or the way you speak, you know, really, you really need to change the way you're talking to people, or the way you're treating people, or the way you're treating your kids, the way you're treating your wife, the way you work, you know. I can observe all kinds of things about you, but the question is, I need to ask myself, what am I not seeing about me? You know, before I even think about that, is there part of that in me? I'm not sure that we really do that very often. Or worse, what am I trying to hide? Jesus cries out, hypocrite! If we're leading others and we're blind, then our disciples will grow to be like us. You can apply that on any level, whether you're a parent, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a leader in the church, whether you're a leader in the community, whether you're a leader on the job. Whatever the character flaw is that we have, we can be training it into those we lead so that they fall into the same ditch. If we are the disciples of Jesus and hear his instruction and do it, we are becoming more like him every time we submit to his instruction. Every time we even, you know, I don't know if it's how it's like with you, but oftentimes I'm doing something, I'm saying something, I'm in the middle of an action, and I clearly, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is there speaking or reminding me as I'm doing something, or as I'm saying, John, John, think about this. And, you know, when we submit to that, when we just immediately change the way we're doing something or, or, you know, apologize or whatever. When we submit to his instruction, we're changing, we're growing, we're walking in the light, and then we're able to assist others. Rejecting his instruction leaves us in a permanent state of spiritual blindness. I don't know about you, I don't want to be that person, I'm sure you don't. Number two, what Jesus is kind of saying here, to put it in the modern vernacular, is clean up your own backyard first. As a pastor, there are some places that I do not go with people because I, I feel that I'm not best qualified or equipped to do it. There are things that I don't do so well. And there are others who do it better. 
there are areas that I don't feel like I've been fully transformed in as much as others I know. Or perhaps I started with, with, with such a deficit in those areas that my progress has not reached the level of what some people began with. I, I'm, I'm fully cognizant of that in some areas of my life. That I had such a deficit in such an area that while there's been transformation, I haven't even caught up to where those people started. Jesus is addressing the hypocrite that exists in many of us. It certainly only takes, you know, like one visit to, to Facebook or a place like that to see people who are calling everybody out. And uh, they're calling everybody else out, but they can't seem to get their own lives in order. Jesus says to that person, do you not perceive the plank that is in your own eye? In other words, the fact that a person is calling out an issue without dealing with it first in their own eyes compounds it and makes that issue much larger than the issue that they identify in someone else. So clean up your own backyard first before you attempt to tell others how to do it. There's a huge item here that, that really needs to be sounded out in this particular time, at this juncture in our generation, in our, in our life right now, there's some things happening that, that uh, this is speaking to. It's called personal responsibility. I put that in bold, large letters. Personal responsibility. You know, there are victimization vendors on every street right now. But the number one thing people need to do is take responsibility for their attitude, for their life, for their heart, for their thinking, and for their work, and stop blaming everyone else. The things that happened to you way back, you know, when, in your childhood, or things that happened in another generation, or in another country, or whatever, another place. A significant difference that we need to understand, we need to fully appreciate a significant difference between the gospel and every other message that is being sounded out today is this. The gospel calls us to personal responsibility. Not to blaming others, pointing out the faults and wrongs in others. This is huge. Take responsibility. Clean up your own backyard and stop focusing on the faults and weaknesses of others. Deal with your own stuff. Number three. I think it's important that uh, we get some victories and then go to war for someone else's life. You know, we are, we are connected to each other. And Jesus is not saying don't help other people. Just focus on yourself and leave everybody else alone. He's not saying that. He's saying, deal with your own stuff. Then you will see clear to take the speck out of somebody else's eye. You know, if you've been unable to overcome in areas of your life, but you want to help someone else, Jesus is giving you some wisdom. For example, let's say you can't shut up. You can't stop losing your temper. Or you can't stop telling lies. Or being dishonest with people in business situations. Or looking at pornography. Or cannot seem to sustain meaningful relationships. Or you can't stop being argumentative, unkind, unthoughtful, inconsiderate, lazy. Can't hold a job down. You're resentful towards anybody who's in authority. No one can tell you what to do. You criticize everybody who's a leader. Shall I go on? Maybe you need to take responsibility. Focus on winning some victories in Christ in one or more of those areas. Then you'll see your way clear to begin to share with others what God has done for you. Jesus told people to go and tell others what God has done for you. We declare our testimonies. And it's very important that we do. But first, we have to have that experience of breakthrough. You know, God is a God of breakthrough. And he has one with your name on it. 
God wants to help you in areas. He has given you the Holy Spirit. And by uh, submitting to his word and by fellowshipping with the spirit and submitting to the spirit, we actually grow what is called the fruit of the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit is directly designed to overcome all those negative areas. For hatred, he gives us love. You know, for confusion and, and, and a lack of peace, he gives us peace. For anxiety and depression, he gives us joy. For impatience, he gives us long suffering. And so on and so on. As we hang out with the Holy Spirit, his fruit begins to appear in our life. And so you can help people, and we're here to help people. But most of what I share on, on a one-to-one -one level, is things that I've experienced, I've learned and, and grew through myself. I have some victories. I have some areas that have definitely undergone some transformation, a measure of transformation. I, I don't claim to be perfect. I have not arrived. And, and certainly, I still have some areas that need transformation. But I feel I can help some people in some of those areas. And where I can't, I attempt to hook them up with people who I think demonstrate Christ-like character in that area. So my word to you today, and I think this word is speaking, is saying win some victories. Get some freedom. Deal with your own stuff. Bring it to the God. And, and you'll become a candidate to help others. You'll be able to help them with the very things. Many, many times, you've heard me say this before, but our scars become our stars. And the areas that we struggle in, the, way, the areas that we think we're never going to win in. I remember, I'll tell you honestly, as a young man, there was so many issues in my life. And there was so many struggles. I, I just really felt like, you know, I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to make it. I'm just, I mean, never mind. I wasn't even thinking about ministry. I'm just never going to make it as a Christian. Because I just had so much stuff to deal with. But you know, somehow, by the grace of God, God began to help me. And God, you know, the great and wonderful thing about our Heavenly Father is what He often does is He begins to deal with one issue at a time. You know, I was giving some counsel to a parent recently. And I was just saying, well, how does God deal with you? Does God deal with like 15 different things at once? No. How does He deal with you? Well, He usually convicts me of something. Right. He puts his finger on one thing at a time. Then he works with you, releases grace, and, and then you begin to seek change in that area. And, and, and you know, it's the same thing is true with, uh, as, as what is true is in parenting is true with our lives. God wants to take something. And, and Jesus said, that if, we, if we'll uh, deal with that, what is stuck in our eyes first, and get those victories, we'll have restored vision. So number four is, is all about renewed vision. My last point is about renewed vision. Specs are just issues that still need to be overcome. Planks are bigger issues because they result from our failing to take responsibility, ignoring uh, our issues, and focusing on everyone else's. Well, we've got big planks when we're doing that. Jesus said, if we will deal what's stuck in our own eyes first, get those victories, we'll have restored vision that uniquely enables us to help others in those same areas. When you have gone through the hard and arduous work of bringing yourself to the Word of God and to the Spirit of God and into prayer and seeking so that something has transpired within you that transforms your dross into gold tried in the fire. You see things differently and you see things clearly. You've got experience. You've got faith for this. And you have vision that is able both to identify the locus of issues in others, but the ability to help extract them from those issues and those traps and those sins. It's renewed vision. If I call out everyone else for racism, but I'm not willing to look at my life to see where I'm inconsistent in dealing with people who believe, look, or think differently than I do, I've got a, big, I, I, I've got a bigger problem than the racist. You know, something I've noticed consistently 
that, you know, is the incredible level of intolerance that people who are calling everyone else out while they're, you know, marching through the streets and carrying their banners and signs. I was watching something on TV the other day and it was a full video of a, of a demonstration. It was, you know, someone who who'd caught the whole thing and, um, and then someone from a, a particular news, uh, you know, a, a, a news a group that, that you know kind of, okay, they're, they're, they, have, they represent a different kind of thinking. And they were there to kind of, you know, get this on film and, re and report about it. But the people who were in the demonstration attacked them. And they, they got angry and they got aggressive and then they got violent. Telling them, get out of here. Yeah. Mean-spirited. Intolerant. That's plank behavior. It's pure hypocrisy. And there's oodles of it on display right now if you want to see it. And the reason that I believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer for every major problem facing our world today is because Jesus never promoted finger pointing, assigning of blame, or overthrowing of evil institutions. What he called for was interchange in the heart of each person. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near you. What a contrast. Huge contrast What's what we see happening in the culture. The kingdom of God has come near you. You change. You repent. It's personal responsibility. So renewed vision and clarity of vision is the result of turning from hypocritical plank behavior by identifying it and dealing it uh, through the grace and the power of his word and his spirit. Then we see clearly. Then we have restored vision that makes us more like the master. We, we become his disciple. We become a follower of Jesus because we've been yoked in to that discipleship process with him where he is speaking words like these to us. And even, even right now, you're watching uh, this video and I'm sharing this word. The question isn't about evaluating my preaching or, hey, that was a great message or that was a bad message. <laughs> you know, I didn't like that message. <laughs> it isn't about that. It isn't about whether you liked it, didn't like it, if it's entertaining, if, if, you know, if I entertained you. It's about are you hearing the word of God? And when you hear, are you stopping to consider, yeah, I think I need to hear this. I think I maybe have some plank behavior. And maybe I need to take some personal responsibility in some areas that I've been calling other, uh, you know, I've been intolerant of it in others, but I see it in my own life. Is that possible? I think we all have some of it. And uh, Jesus, in his, you know, we want to get real with Jesus. That's, that's what this series is about, is let's get real. Let's, let's deal with it. Let's, let's say, hey, we're going to hear it, and we're going to listen to it, and we're going to take it in. We're going to embrace it. We're going to believe it. And we're going to let the word get inside of us and change us. That's my prayer for you today. It's my prayer for me. It's a prayer for everyone who watches this broadcast today. That we'll, we'll get real with Jesus. And we will allow his word to become the transforming factor in our lives. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you today for just how good you really are. How loving, gracious, and kind that you even bother with us here on planet Earth. God, that you will not forsake us, that you will not leave us, that you sent heaven's best, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, you sent to die in our place, to take our sins 
And the Bible says you did this when we were still your enemies. So Lord, we can't doubt at all the goodness of God towards us. But we, because your kingdom is coming near, we need to change. We need to repent. Help us to repent today. Help us. If there's something in this message that's been identified that is stuck in our eye. Maybe some plank thinking. Or, or maybe, maybe just a speck. Maybe it's just a speck. We just need to deal with a speck. Lord, I pray, God, today you would just help us. Give us grace today as we humbly acknowledge that we have some planks. Maybe we have some specks. And we bring them before you. We ask you. We, we want to change. Help us. Give us that desire to get into your word and into your spirit. And do the hard and arduous work of dealing with ourselves and cleaning up our own backyard. So that then we see clearly. We have renewed vision. And we can, we can be a blessing and help others overcome in the areas they're struggling with. Because we've already fought that battle. And with God's help, we've had a breakthrough. So, Father, we thank you for that today. We thank you for breakthroughs in Jesus' mighty name. And also, before we close today, I want to pray for you. Perhaps you're watching this today and, and it's, you know, you've never had the opportunity to personally invite Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. The truth is, He is Lord and Savior, whether you acknowledge it or not. But the Bible, there was a song written many years ago that said, the greatest joy belongs to those who, who uh, willingly, jo joyfully receive him now. And so the scripture says that he came to his own. Jesus came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But to as many as receive him, he gives them the power to become the children of God. If you're not sure that you're a child of God today, it's about receiving him receiving his word, receiving his instruction, because you can't separate the teaching of Jesus from the person of Jesus. It's all the same. When you receive his word, you receive him. And Jesus said, he who receives me, receives my Father in heaven. If you want to receive him today, would you just pray, just as an expression of your desire, just pray this prayer with me. The prayer doesn't save you. Receiving Jesus does. But this is an expression. So just repeat after me if you've never done this before. And once we're done, if you'll just kind of hit the button at the side where it says uh, that, you have, uh, th that you've accepted Christ today, we'd love to hear from you. So pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father God, I come to you today in the name of your Son, Jesus. And I just want to receive you into my heart, into my life. I want to receive your word and become your disciple. Lord Jesus, teach me, instruct me, help me with the power of your grace. I believe in you and I thank you that you died for me. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, the scripture tells us that that uh, if you come to him, he will in no way cast you out. Jesus is not into rejecting people. He's into saving people and in receiving them into his kingdom. So I pray that that's been your experience today. Thank you so much for joining us here at CLC this morning. We love you. We'd love to hear from you. And God bless you. What a great service that was this morning. I don't know about you, but I felt so blessed and encouraged, strengthened. Hearing from Pastor John is always a good thing. Uh, I wanted to let you know that we have words of knowledge right now that are gonna pop up in the chat room. A word of knowledge is basically something, a word that one of our prayer partners has heard from God on. And uh, we believe that it is something that God wants to heal, that he wants to speak to, he wants to minister to you over. And so if there's any of those words that apply to your life personally, why don't you receive that right now? Even lay hands on yourself. Or if there's someone that's in your group that it applies to you, lay hands on them just in the next moment here. And we're so happy that you joined us for Church Online. Have Happy Canada Day once again and have a fantastic week. We'll see you next Sunday.